I got the fire flow. Shorty getting down, going up the fire pole. Radical in the mitten where we mad co. I got the bullfrog flow. Do a tadpole. Do the love, do the rush, do the buzz, let it brush you. Ah, welcome to someone's favorite movie. I'm coming to you from the pod shack outside beautiful Flint, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy, and with me is the man, the myth, the legend, Tomco. Not going to lie, folks. I've got uh, five Oberons in me. Holy cow, you're really it, tearing one. It's been one of those days. It is hump day, after all. It is. And you know what? I've got two more days until vacation. I'm plowing through this fucking week, come hell or high water. Ah, Tomco has no cares in the world. He's just trying to get to the no, vacation. No, 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 I have too many cares in the world. i got to get through this week, sir. Oh, I think you're easy, breezy, beautiful cover, girl. That's what I think you are. So, what's going on, sir? What is going on? Oh, nothing. Um, Except one thing. So, we're covering Evil Dead, the musical, today. And uh, I was reminded of the Housewares song today. (laughs) Yes. It's probably my favorite song in the the musical. Housewares Employee is what it's called. And I was reminded of it because I was at the retail paradise that gainfully employs me. And uh, I work in a uh, rich tourist town full of rich Germans and rich Republicans. And tourists. And tourists who are less rich, but, you know. Um, And the town is pretty much owned by three families, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And they really lean hard into that German motif. So they make... They they make all their employees and some of their restaurants dress like mighty fools and lederhosen and uh, little Bavaria stock. yeah little Bavaria dresses and it's really ridiculous. So I was walking to the back, getting ready to leave, make my grand escape to rush home and talk to a Tomco because I'm the luckiest man in the world. You see. Oh. And I see one man in a ridiculous outfit and his his lass next to him in a ridiculous outfit. Obviously, they're co-workers. Obviously, they work at the same place. It reminded me of Housewares employee, this song. That's all I got. <laughs> How bitter were these people? Because I have gone bar hopping in this town that you've uh, talked about mm-hmm. several times. Yeah. And anytime I see somebody in Lederhosen... They're always angry. Wow. Always. I think that's t- the default setting when you put on lederhosen. It just sounds like an angry word. It does. But the that's that's the great thing about it. Physically, it looks like a happy-go-lucky Pinocchio good time outfit. Mm-hmm. But the people who are wearing it are always pissed to be wearing it. Yeah. Outside, it looks like a smiley face. Inside, bubbling rage. Hmm. It's how I live my life anyways, so maybe I should get a pair of leader hose. <laughs> no, I th- I think you need to go the route that I took and just get a kilt because that is nothing but aggressive. That's super aggressive. I would love to wear a it kilt, is. but I'm not Scottish. Do you have to be Scottish to wear a kilt? I think you do. Uh, I don't know, but it helps. Yeah, it sure does. Especially not, on windy days. I'm certainly not cool at all. I don't have any cool qualities about me. I'm not Scottish. I don't have leader hosen. Uh, and I don't own a Necronomicon. Necronomicon. Wow. You seem to. Tomko sent me a picture of a ne- Necronomicon, which is hard to say and fun to look at. <laughs> uh, I've always liked the design of this. If you don't know, it's from the Evil Dead, and it's uh, the Book of the Dead that st- summons all the demons and whatnot. You seem to have one. I do. I actually have two of them. I have uh, the Book of the Dead editions of Evil Dead 1 and 2, the first of which is uh, signed by the uh, main special effects artist for the Evil Dead movies, Tom Sullivan. I met him, uh, God, about 15 years ago at uh, Motor City Comic Con over in Novi, Michigan. Uh, Very, very, actually, really cool dude. Uh, uh, He primarily uh subsists on comic books and role playing art. Uh if you ever have a chance to see him at a Comic Con, it's definitely worth the look. He has original props from the Evil Dead movies. 
uh, including the Necronomicon, the Kandarian Dagger. Uh, he has the ankle that was pierced by a pencil, uh, as well as a lot of facial prosthetics. It's it's a lot of fun. Really cool dude. I was looking at his uh, filmography, and he's not as prolific as you would think he would be. No, no. But he, he is definitely a local uh, artist. He did do Jason Goes to Hell, which made me smile because the Necronomicon is in that briefly. Yes. I'm like, oh, so he threw that in there. That's nice. Well, I mean, every time that design is used, he at least gets a royalty check. I mean, he never really has to work again because he designed something so iconic. It looks so cool, though. It does. If he, if, uh, if, now, should we assume that everybody who's listening to this is versed in Evil Dead? Uh, I don't think we should assume that. Would you like to describe Evil Dead, the franchise? Because there's four movies, really. Well, five if you could include uh, Within the Woods, isn't it called? The short film? Yes. Uh, it all started with, uh, I mean, Sam Raimi, Bruce Tampert. Bruce Campbell, they are Michigan guys. And they decided that they wanted to get into the movie industry. And they decided that the easiest entry was horror. The thing is, is that none of them like horror. They all get squeamish. But they decided to make the goriest movie that they possibly could on a shoestring budget. They got their financing from individual donors that they went door to door to get donations for this movie. And they produced this little movie down in Tennessee called The Evil Dead. It's the definition of gonzo. They have, I mean, it's just hell in a handbasket put on film. <laughs> I wish you were around to get that put on a poster back in 1980. <laughs> I mean, they have everything that you could possibly imagine. They have dismemberments, demonic possessions. They have shotguns. They have weird camera angles. They have things that are breaking all of the rules of film, but they somehow make it work. And they have no actual film training at all, and they make it work. It is a miracle of film. Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, are bar none genuinely some of my favorite movies. Do you think because they were not fans of horror, do you think that's why they eventually blended more comedy into it with Evil Dead 2? Yes. Yes. And, well, I mean, not only were they not horror fans, but they were three stooges fans and if you yeah. look for it you can definitely see the influence of the three stooges in both evil dead one and two yeah there's that scene in the basement with the light bulb yes uh, the uh what is it bruce campbell he goes down ash williams goes into the cellar and the light bulb starts filling with blood and that's straight from a plumbing we will go an old yes. classic three stooges bit yeah, I mean, honestly, let's face it. If you're listening to a podcast called Someone's Favorite Movie, you have to be somewhat versed in the Stooges, Sam Raimi, Evil Dead. Come on. Bruce Campbell, at least. Yes. I mean, it's it's kind of amazing to me that uh, both Raimi and Campbell, both Michigan boys, made this movie for 300 grand, over 300 grand. And they went on to have the careers that they've had. Like Bruce Campbell is a, an icon. Sam Raimi directed fucking Spider-Man for crying out loud three times. Doesn't get much yeah. bigger than that. Uh, and he's going to be directing the next uh, Doctor Strange movie. Which I'm excited I... about. Yes. Because... because Sam Raimi has a very distinct film style. No matter what genre he's making, you can tell... If it's a Sam Raimi movie, doesn't matter if it's a romance, if it's a comedy, if it's a horror, anything you can tell. Yep. This is Sam Raimi. And I can't wait to see what he does with Dr. Strange. Yeah. And he's uh, reportedly a huge fan of Dr. Strange, too. So that can't hurt. No, no. Very excited for that movie. So Evil Dead, uh, in my opinion, is genuinely frightening. Uh, I think the low budget makes it look creepier, more horrific. Yes, yeah. 
uh, it it feels more real than a lot of the other movies of that era. I mean, if you look at say a Friday the Thirteenth and compare it to Evil Dead, Evil Dead blows it out of the water. Yeah, for sure. Um, Evil Dead Two is like everything this this podcast was built on. Like it's it's so campy and quirky and also in stages horrific but also fun this is where we get the iconic that's the key word it's a fun movie yeah this is where we get the iconic chainsaw hand that ash wields and so many great quotes i mean come on can you hear the word groovy without thinking of bruce campbell no that's the first person i think of when yes. I, whenever i hear groovy i think of bruce campbell and then Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is... I, I'm glad that it's kind of taken its place as one of the classic 90s movies. I think Army of Darkness is like full-out Three Stooges in medieval times. It is, yes. It, and it's very slapstick. Um, but it also has that over-the-top machismo level where you can't take the machismo seriously. You point at it and laugh at it. it how ridiculous it is. Yeah, I think this is the Army of Darkness is where Ash Williams becomes the character that everyone thinks of when they think of Ash. Yes. A lot more arrogant, cocky. Um, but ultimately stupid. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> who who would win in a fight, Ash Williams or Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China? Ooh. Because they're both bumbling buffoons that think they're heroes. I got to go Ash. Because as stupid as Ash is, there is one thing on Earth he knows, and it's how to fight. That's true. I That was just the dorkiest thing I've ever asked you on this podcast, by the way. <laughs> I think that, it is. that was so stupid. I feel so dumb. No, celebrate it, sir. Oh, man. I'm going to go punt myself in the nuts for oh, that God, one. I, I am in my element on this episode, sir. I know you are. I know you are. You're so excited. Um, I am. The The Evil Dead in 2013. What did you think of the remake? It had me until the very, very end where they had the homemade defibrillator. <laughs> okay. I thought that was just out of left field. I thought it was stupid. It completely took me out of the movie. Up until that point, it had me in its grip. It was a full-blown horror movie. It mm-hmm. was genuinely terrifying. And then it just overwhelmed me with stupid. Yeah, I agree. It was. It, I thought it was really well-made, and I was impressed on how they just leaned right into the horror element and yes. just straight away from the com- comedic out- tone What completely. Um. Ash does make a cameo in the movie after the very, credits. Very end of the credits, yes. And he says groovy. groovy, yeah. So that places it in the Evil Dead universe. Oh, God, I fucking love Evil Dead. <laughs> so uh, it went on to become Ash versus the Evil Dead, a TV, uh, TV series on stars for three seasons? Yes. What do we think of the series? I've not watched it. I have it. But I haven't the watched. The first it. two seasons are fucking amazing up until the season finale of season two. Mm-hmm. And then it completely jumped the tracks. It was. They changed uh, uh, showrunners. It just went off the rails. And I have not watched an episode past that. I, I, I have the third season. Mm-hmm. I hope it's good. One of these days I'll get around to watching it, but that season finale just kind of killed it for me. A show like that should never completely lose it because you would think that Bruce and Sam to some extent, I know he's probably super busy, but you would think they would both have a lot of pull and a lot of say-so on a show like that. Honestly, I think it's one of those situations where the person who is in charge of the property is too close to the property. They oh, okay. weren't willing to let go of control, and that kind of killed the momentum. Gotcha. Well, that's a shame. But those, fir- I mean, the first two seasons are so amazing. Hey, I mean, I-, I dare any Evil Dead fan to watch the first 
episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead and not just get fucking geeked. <laughs> it's so amazing. I love how geeky you are right now. Holy cow, I've yes, never heard you I, so I, passionate. Yes, yes. Man. I, this is this is what I live for, sir. This yeah. is this is what I hope for with this uh this show. You you can list Tom Tomco's loves right now based on on the passion in his voice. It goes his wife, his his dog, <laughs> and evil dead. That's that's it. Throw Batman and Superman in there and that would be accurate. Yes, sir. <laughs> thought so. I, I thought I had it. Well, I mean, I'm sorry that I've been dragging you down with such cinema. Oh no no! I've had fun. Okay, you, bro- was... you have broadened my horizons, sir. I can genuinely, honestly say that. Well, that's that's what it's all about: broadening it horizons. Because uh, there's a lot of interesting things out there, and I think some of the shittiest cinema at least takes the chance to be original. And that's why yes. I dig it. Like an original idea will always pull me in. I mean. You can only watch Captain Marvel three so many times. I'm a I'm a sucker for that, but sometimes I want something a little bit different. So yes, and that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Which leads, before we talk about the musical, to a segment we call "What are you watching? What have you been watching, Tomko?" Well, I know you've been watching the Sleepaway Camp movies, which is coming soon, folks. Yes, we can't wait to talk. That that's gonna be a lot of fun. We we uh, promised that months ago, and we're gonna deliver. Yes, yeah, we're gonna deliver. Uh, beyond that, uh, I've been streaming a lot of stuff from Amazon Prime and Netflix. Uh, I love my wife, and she has very retro tastes, mm-hmm. and she discovered that Amazon Prime has a whole slew of episodes of supermarket sweep oh my god i used to love that when i was a kid yes except it's kind of interesting to watch that with you know 2020 vision literally right you get to see just how badly we were dressed in the 90s you get to see a bunch of products we forgot about and you get to see just weird Cosby sweaters on a white dude. <laughs> yeah, that guy was the weirdest dude. I he o- was. I always loved the final sweep or whatever when people would run around with the the carts and like throw turkeys in their carts and stuff. I, for some reason, I know, that I, really I, appealed. I've watched over a hundred episodes at this, at this point, and oh my I God. keep waiting to see like some brawl start out at the ham aisle. But yeah, I've not seen it yet. Oh, that's amazing. The uh, the other thing I've been watching is this show on Netflix. This is like the definition of someone's favorite movie. It is undeniably stupid, but unexpectedly entertaining. Okay. And that is Floor is Lava. Oh, the, my girlfriend's kids watch that. It's stupid. Yeah. It is so fucking stupid. But you know what? It it's entertaining. Yeah, that's... I, I I can't justify this, but it's fun to watch these idiots, grown men, grown women, acting like five year old children. Yeah, don't they jump from thing to thing? And there's like red liquid that they're trying to not fall into. Yes, it's set up like a living room, a study, various rooms that you would have in a house. Furniture is arranged strategically to where you are able to leap from piece to piece. And if you miss it, you literally fall in lava. It's it's so fucking dumb. <laughs> so dumb. But you know what? It's addictive. Yeah, that's I all that matters. It. Yeah. I, I can't justify it. Yeah, as long as you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Exactly. What about you, sir? What are you watching? Well, I watched a whole buttload of Sleepaway Camp, and I'm... Oh, same I'm, here. I'm same ex- here. I can't wait to talk. By the way, folks, in, in a preview, one of those movies, and it's the last one, features the worst character ever put to film and made the main character. 
I I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. The entire movie revolves around this main character named Alan, and he's the worst character I've ever seen in a movie. Arguably the least sympathetic character. Oh, God. I can't wait to talk about that one. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, other than that, I revisited on Shudder. Because I love my Shutter. Shutter's my Same here. Shutter's my jam, and especially for five bucks a month, it's definitely worth it. Can't beat it. Not at all. Uh, and they're constantly adding new things mm-hmm. on a weekly basis, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I revisited a movie I saw a few years ago when it came out called Nina Forever. Okay. Now, ha- have you ever seen It Follows? Yes. Okay, so it follows is about uh, basically a sexual, sexually transmitted demon, I guess you would say, where yeah. uh, anytime you have sex with somebody, it passes. Yeah, yeah, you pass the demon on to somebody else, and uh, it stays with you until you pass it to somebody else, and it's really like a a deep metaphor for obviously sexual histories Jeez. and. Yeah, Nina Forever is uh, s- along the same lines, but not. Uh, I think Nina Forever actually came out a week before it follows. So, okay. But it's it's about a man named Rob who he lost his girlfriend in a car accident. She died, and after that, he kind of lost his mind and tried to commit suicide. He starts to overcome his grief. Falls in love with a coworker, again housewares employee, right? <laughs> and as they fall more and more in love and start to consummate the relationship, Nina comes back from the dead every time they try to have sex and interrupts <laughs> things, literally. And she's a naked, bleeding corpse. Mood killer mood killer and she's not a ghost they can t- they can both touch her and she leaves just this bloody smear all over the place and it's really interesting they eventually the girlfriend was like let's let's try to have a th- three way with her it's oh my god yeah it, it's really only in movies yeah it's really weird really inventive um really original and it says a lot about like grief and getting over somebody and like whenever you're trying to move on from somebody the it the history still kind of sticks with you it's really good i'd check it out if i were you yeah, i think i will check this out yes it's interesting for sure speaking of shutter i uh went back in the wayback machine and i saw elvira Mistress of the Dark for the first time since like 1989, 1990. I, watched, I was a wee lad the last time I saw this. I watched it and last year. I can't believe how dirty the double entendres are in that movie. It's fucking filthy. Yeah. It is. I can't believe my father let me watch this when I was a kid. Yeah. Like every other line is about her boobs or getting. Right or up. head. Or head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's really dirty. I th- I think my father was just mainly, the you know, paying attention to the cleavage, and I can't blame him. No, Elvira is something else. Uh, hello, girl. Hello. <laughs> the line is "Hey, girl, hey," but I'll allow you that. You put your Thank own you. spin on it. Hello, girl. Hello. <laughs> uh, did you like it? It's the epitome of campy. Yeah. If you look at it with a serious critical eye, it's it's shit. It's total dog shit. But if you just want to have a shot in a brew, it's a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I th- well, I think the character of El- Elvira is literally camp, so the movie goes right along with that. It is, yeah. It, it's a fun movie. Yeah. Now, what did you think about it on your... Uh, rewatch uh i enjoyed it i i 
I thought it was pretty dumb too. I couldn't believe how like raunchy it was. I, yeah. It seems like when I was a kid, I watched it too, and I felt like I saw it on network TV or something. Yeah, I can't believe that they they did that, yeah. and they only got a PG thirteen rating out of that. In fact, I know, I know, I saw it on network TV. I it was on like prime time on like a Sunday night or something because I remember going to school the next day and all the kids were chattering about, "Did you watch Elvira?" And I just remember, okay, I have to ask on network TV. Did they have the grand finale to her Vegas show? Yes, they did, and that's the part I remember the most because oh I, my god, I remember I remember watching it and my mom getting really upset with me and asking me what I was watching. That's <laughs> what how, do you think I'm watching, Mom? Yeah, I mean, and still to this day, when I rewatched it last year, that was the part I remembered the most about the movie. In fact, that was the only thing I remembered about the movie was that. So, not gonna lie, that was the uh, thing that uh, stood out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, net, network TV standards were a little bit different back then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the 80s. The 80s. Speaking of the 80s, Evil Dead the Musical, which didn't come out yeah, in the awesome. 80s, but it's based on a movie that came out in the 80s. That's a segue, I guess. Yes. Whatever. It works. Mm. Evil Dead the Musical. It's a long-running play. About Ash, the original miserable retail slave. Yes. Yes. We are we are partners in retail. We are kindred spirits, sir. For sure. Uh, Evil Dead the Musical was first performed in 2003 in Toronto and became the longest running show there in 20 years. Over 500 productions have been, have been performed all over the world. A critic for the New York Times even called it the next The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Have you I can ever, see that. Have you ever seen it live? I almost did. Mm. I was going to get tickets uh, over in East Lansing at uh, the campus of MSU, and the person I uh, wanted to go with backed out, just didn't have time. And it's a disappointment because we were going to get tickets in, and I quote, the splatter zone. Yeah, that's where you want to be. I know somebody that uh, went and saw it, and they got splatter seats, and I was so jealous. Yeah, me and the oh, girl. Damn it! You know what? Once the world gets back to to normal, you and I need to go see this. Absolutely, it comes around the Detroit area. Well, I looked. It, it's been here almost every year, so. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, I mean, with the Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell connection, it's a, it's kind of becoming a Michigan hallmark. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the splatter seats are the seats in the front few rows, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, where the crowd actually gets splattered with blood. And you are encouraged to, wire, to wear pure white T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Your t-shirt is a souvenir. Uh, The creator of Evil Dead the Musical, Christopher Bond, he said that um, the Splatter Zone, at first we thought this would be the cheapest ticket because who wants to get blood dumped on them? And now it's like the top ticket and people clamor for it. People show up in white tuxedos. (laughs) We're always thinking, how much blood can we dump on the audience? And will this theater let us destroy their carpets? We actually came up with a system to not destroy theaters. It's almost like laying a full body condom on the audience so we don't ruin any of these theaters. Now, is this the first time you've ever heard of this show? Evil Dead suggested it? Um, No, I was aware of it because I had the friend that went and saw it, and she told me about the splatter seats and stuff. So I didn't know about it. Um, And I thought, well, that makes sense. I can't think of another sort of franchise where you could turn it into a musical like that because it is it is horror but it is also kind of campy and fun so i could mm-hmm. see that you know uh but this was the first time i i watched it for sure i still remember the first time i watched it uh i have a friend uh scott he is a horror aficionado he and I would hang out constantly watching movies, trading discs back and forth. 
And one day I show up at his place and he's like, you need to watch this. He's like, Evil Dead, the musical. I'm like, okay, but they, they aren't going to do like beheadings. They aren't going to do dismemberments. He's like, yeah, they will. Just watch. And holy shit, they did it. Yeah. It, it's kind of impressive how they how they're able to pull everything off just practically and with like no money and no special effects really just simple simple ways around it you know mhm and it, it works is, the best way i can describe this in one word is clever mhm um so the version we watch is from 2003 uh, mm-hmm. Do you know what city it's it was in, or when in Toronto? T- oh, it was in Toronto, so it was during the At initial the, run. Uh, Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Oh, okay. And the the crowd there was eating it up, like yes, uh, it's it's vulgar and raunchy and bloody, and everything you would expect an Evil Dead the musical to be, and the crowd cheers for the blood and all the catchphrases. And all the iconic moments are there. They they blend Evil Dead One, Two, and Army of Darkness a little bit into it. Mm. Um, and I I'm impressed how well it works. It's one of those things that on paper it shouldn't work, but they're smart enough to be able to figure it out. And God damn, if it doesn't work like a well oiled machine. I was trying to think of like another franchise you could do this to. And I kept coming. I kept. Well, I know that they have uh, plans for like a uh, Back to the Future musical. Ooh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. That would. You could pull that off. Yeah, I could see that. Uh,. The one I they thought did up... a Spider-Man musical, but that's like notoriously bad. Yeah, we're gonna have to cover that at some point. We have to, yes. Yeah. Uh, I kept thinking of Clerks, but I feel like Kevin Smith was talking about doing that, and maybe that's how I got the idea. I know he wants to do it in like an off-Broadway production, but Kevin Smith is—he's kind of, you know, he will announce something and just kind of slowly walk away from it without ever mentioning it again yeah he's announced about 40 projects over the past two years and there's still yeah like he he announced the sequel to mall rats and then walked away and then was going to do it and then walked away and then wrote the script i guess i don't know whatever so what's your impression on this uh this video sir uh i was i i was surprised by how vulgar it was Honestly, yes. uh, the, the character of Scott calling uh, Ash's sister uh, Shelly? Cheryl. He, Cheryl, he calls everyone and everything the same name. Stupid bitch. Yes. And it made me laugh every time. I was like, <laughs> I, it's just, just because it was so, I don't know, unexpected, I guess, but it made me laugh every time. Un- and un- unexpected and inappropriate. It's yeah. laughing at the machismo. Yeah. Um, I thought it was funny. There, there was a few lines that generally, genuinely made me laugh out loud. Like, <laughs> just the stupidest lines. There was at one point where Demon Cheryl was like, I wish... I- I was looking forward to biting into his flesh. You know, the commercials say that Scott's is the softest tissue. <laughs> yes. And, the endless puns yeah. from Cheryl were amazing. And she says, I'm like a literal Hulk Hogan. I'll get you, brother. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it made me laugh. Um, the thing that amazed me was the fact that they incorporated so much from these movies into this cheap little dime store production. Up to and including Ash's psychotic break where the room is coming alive and the the moose the is moose. taunting him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um I was also surprised at how much of, of a musical it was. A real yeah. musical. Like it works. Like the song like I said, Housewares Employee is a good song, I think. 
Um, you also have songs like What the Fuck Was That? That's the title. Mm-hmm. Good old Reliable Jake, which has to be your co-host <laughs> anthem. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. All the men in my life get, keep getting killed by Kandarian demons. Do the, Necrono- um, do the Necronomicon, which is a really fucking catchy song. Uh, well, not only that, but the production where he has the bowler hat, the sequin vest, the cane. It It's just so... I mean, it's just the right amount of over the top to yeah. where it works, but it's not too much. And and the final number, "Hail to the King," is a like a a true end of the the musical type of number, like you would see in any musical. Like all bets are off. Let's leave it all out there. "Hail to the King" is definitely that the perfect period to the pe- play. Yes, it's it's just amazing. I, I can't believe that they have not done an actual film version of this. I'm genuinely shocked. I was looking at the Wikipedia page for it, and, um, well, I should bring it up so I get the quote right. But one of the producers of it was saying that there was rumors going around about um, a film version of the musical, but in 3D. Okay, I could see that back when 3D was a thing. Yeah, right. But but I'm with you. Like I can't believe it's not been already filmed. Um, it would seem like it would be a perfect thing to throw on Netflix or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But do it. Well, especially during this time and day. I mean, I I would like to see it with, you know, a real sets and stuff, not the mm-hmm. just the play. I mean, I guess you could do it. Uh, especially since, you know, Hamilton's a big deal. Why not just do, just film uh, Evil Dead the Musical and put it on, <laughs> put it on Disney Plus. Though, I mean, in all honesty, the VHS quality of the copy that we watched, the cheap scenes, it definitely adds to the charm of the production. Yeah. Uh, George Reinblatt, who is one of the, I don't know, guys, he said that, uh, The whole internet buzz thing about this 3D movie is completely untrue. Sam Raimi hasn't agreed to do anything like this with the musical. And until that happens, it doesn't matter what any other producer says. We are lucky Mr. Raimi lets us do the stage musical all of you love so much. He has been more than generous to keep the Evil Dead thing alive. Would we like to do a movie someday? Sure. But I'd also like to do Evil Dead as an ice show. But neither has agreed to (laughs) at the time. (laughs) I'm just... Picturing Ash on skates now. Yeah. Uh, have have you heard or have you read about how this thing was actually put together? No. It was actually just a bunch of college kids fresh out of school uh, trying to get into uh, the theater business. And they thought that a campy horror musical would be a great fun idea. So, quote from Christopher Bond in an interview. We emailed Bruce Campbell on the interwebs and said, we're thinking of doing this. Is it cool? We thought he was just going to shut us down, to be honest, but he was actually really helpful pointing us in the right direction. We just said, hey, we're a bunch of young kids trying to make it, and we thought we would put this show up in a bar in Canada. It's very low stakes. And they're like, yeah, go for it. Sure, have some fun. Yeah, from what I understand, Bruce Campbell, Rob Taper, and Sam Raimi love love this show yeah he said i think maybe they saw a little bit of us in them Mm -hmm. which is a good point because these kids are from out of nowhere trying to make a name and it wouldn't surprise me if bruce and sam and co were like you know what that's what we did when we made this evil dead thing why not exactly Uh, so yeah i mean if anything this this show just kind of makes me love Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell that much more because they are, they're somebody who had no real reason to be in the movie business, but they took themselves up by the bootstraps and they kind of forced themselves into the industry. And the fact that they are willing to kind of give up their brainchild for somebody who's trying to do the same just kind of makes me really admire them that much more. Yeah. 
it's it's really a nice thing to do because a lot of people are so protective of their intellectual properties. Yes, especially this day and age. Yeah, and, and I get it to a point, but at the same time, all this can do is bring more fans your way, really. Yeah. I mean, sure, they're going to make some money off your whatever, but I'm sure they get a cut of it anyways. Mm-hmm. And also, you're, you're just funneling fans in your direction to see the movies or the TV show or buy action figures or whatever. It's keeping that intellectual property alive mm-hmm. without having to do a damn thing. Yep, for sure. Um, no, I mean, I, I just adore this production. Yeah, it, it's it's really, it's really cool how well they pull it off. Um, you can actually buy the the songs at the. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's available on, on uh, iTunes, isn't it? Yeah, you can buy an album. They released an album in I want to say 2006 or something like that. Uh, okay. Of the cast recording, I don't think it's from Toronto. I think it's from the cast after that. But still, okay. the song the songs are the same. Uh, they added a few, but nothing earth shattering. And you should definitely check them out. They're really well done. I think. If you're into schlocky horror movies that don't take themselves too seriously, I can't recommend this highly enough. Yeah. Um, did you hear the news that they're coming out with a new Evil Dead movie? I did. I heard that it's not supposed to take uh, part in the main continuity. Ash Williams is not going to be involved in it. And I'll give it a chance. You know? Yeah. It's going to be called Evil Dead now. Uh, it's supposed to feature a female protagonist. And every... Uh, installment of the Evil Dead franchise now is supposed to stand on its own, which I'm not sure I like. Like, you could easily just put it in the continuity and stuff of the franchise already. Why not? Well, I mean, the the thing is, the franchise kind of stands on the shoulders of Ash and Bruce Campbell's increasingly stupid portrayal of that character. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, when you look at the reboot that they did back uh, with uh, that, you know, homemade defibrillator. Yeah. It sorely missed Bruce Campbell and the stupidness. That's true. The whole time I wanted Ash to just appear out of nowhere. Yeah, it needed some, it needed levity. So I'm willing to give this a chance. I will walk into it with an open mind but I'm going to sorely miss Bruce Campbell. But on the other hand, I can understand why he's kind of done with the character. Yeah, uh, I don't blame him. He's played the character for, what, 40 years, 50 years? Yeah. Uh, however long, not 50, but however long, since the 1980. So. Oh, ni- uh, I, w- I want to say like 78 was when they went down to Tennessee. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, that's a long. And in all honesty, the making of that first Evil Dead movie, we can do a whole episode on that. That is just an amazing story of how they brought that to life. Do you have anything else to say about this? Uh, I mean, it's available in a couple different forms on YouTube. Uh, I definitely recommend the original 2003 performance. It's low grain, it's grainy video quality, but it is charming as fuck. I cannot recommend this highly enough. Yeah, go this, out and watch it. This is the kind of thing that I don't think you watching it in high def does it any justice. I kind of enjoyed the fact that it was grainy and VHS quality because it it kind of speaks to the uh like the time in which it was made, yeah. That and the indie quality and indie spirit behind putting on the whole thing. Well, I mean, this is uh, an, another version of Tammy and the T-Rex, where if you have that same exact image in high definition, it loses something. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to see a crystal clear version of this. 
when I watched Tammy and the T-Rex in my high definition Blu-ray, yeah. uh, I couldn't believe how some of the actors looked. I'm like, oh, I had no idea she looked like that because the version <laughs> I originally watched was so smeared and gross that you couldn't even tell. Was it a bad version compared to the YouTube clip that we watched? No, I, I enjoy, I did, I enjoyed it. It was, it was fine. Okay. Fair uh, I think you stumbled upon the next musical that needs to happen, though. Tammy and the T Rex, the musical. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, what would you, out of curiosity, what would you rather have? Another straight Evil Dead movie or a film version of Evil Dead the musical? Oh, I think I'd rather watch Evil Dead the musical on film. I, I agree. I don't. Just, it's the only logical place for that franchise to go, really. Just thinking about a new Evil Dead movie just makes me... If it doesn't have Ash in it, it's like, what's what's the point? It'd be like making a Nightmare on Elm Street without Freddy Krueger. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, I, make any I, yeah. sense. Or I, like, I, like a sl- sleepaway camp without Angela until the last 30 seconds. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> oh, we'll get there, sir. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> uh, so you, would, All right. I would recommend this too. I think everyone should see it, especially if you're an Evil Dead fan. If you're a cult movie fan, I mean, oh, watch it, watch it, get a good beer buzz. You're gonna have a fun time. That's for sure. Tell people where they can find you, Mister Tom Go. You can find me at a little show called Jake and Tom Conquer the uh, World. We are on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you want to reach out to us, you can find us on Twitter at The Drunken Dork. On Facebook, you can find us at Jake and Tom Conquer the Group. I'm kind of jealous that you drank tonight. I was going to drink, and then I didn't, and now I wish I would have. That's the only way to watch this, sir. <laughs> For sure. Uh, you can find me at M Retail Slave or on a big dumb comedy show called Miserable Retail Slave or at miserable dot com where I've been writing blogs and whatnot, including a column called Someone's Favorite Movie Blog, in which I write about movies that we haven't talked about on here. For example, Stay Tuned, starring John Ritter, in which John Ritter gets sucked into a television. Oh it's... my god, I remember that movie. Oh yeah, it's pretty amazing. Didn't... Was Pam Tower was in that, wasn't she? Yep. Pam Dauber okay. plays his wife. Uh, yes. That the creepy Principal Rooney guy from uh, Ferris Bueller plays the mm-hmm. Satan character. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's... It's coming back. Yep. It's a lot of that. fun. It, at one point, John Ritter becomes a cartoon mouse, and then a gangster, and then, <laughs> and then of course, he ends up in an episode of Three's Company, and he just looks at the camera and screams, and everybody <laughs>, laughs. <laughs> and I also wrote about what I read. Oh, Over the Top, the classic Stallone movie. And oh, yes. Yeah. We're going to have to tackle that one of these days, sir. Oh, I'd love to. I Yes. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit when I rewatched it. I was like, oh, this movie. I've never seen that movie. You've never seen Over the Top? We're definitely going to have to do it then for sure. Holy crap. Um, what else? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Next week, we're covering Sleepaway Camp, the entire fucking franchise. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Dusty Wait. Yeah, we've, in the past, we've covered the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise, which was a chore. We covered the Lamp Leprechaun franchise. That was my breaking point. That was even more of a chore. That that sent Tomko into exile for like three months. He never spoke to me. <laughs> He's like, never again. Uh, the Sleepaway Camp movies, I mean. Stay tuned. Yes. I will say it wasn't as bad as I expected, but it's still pretty bad. Yes. And then who knows? The sky's the limit, I guess. There is no shortage of bad movies, sir. That's for sure. So tell a friend to listen. All your movie geek friends be like, hey, listen to this program. And I say that, but I've got like five of them on my hard drive that I still haven't edited. (laughs) (laughs) You too? Yeah, it's it's really a problem. I need to hire somebody to just be like, do this, please, because I can't. 
give me their give me their number <laughs> right uh yeah anyways tell a friend to listen especially your movie loving friends and uh we'll see you next time okay okay bye-bye bye